Conference Committee reports on House Files. <clears throat> Conference can report on House File number 3100, an act relating to health care, establishing an emergency insulin program. The conference report is addressed to the Honorable Melissa Hortman, Speaker of the House, the Honorable Jer Jeremy R. Miller, President of the Senate. We, the underside conferees for House File Number 3100, report that we've agreed upon the items in dispute and recommend it as follows. The conference committee report is signed by four of the five members on behalf of the House and five of the five members on <coughs> the part of the Senate. Howard moves that the report of the conference committee on House File Number 3100 be adopted and that the bill be repassed as amended by conference committee. I recognize the author, the member from Hennepin, Representative Howard, to the conference committee report. Madam Speaker, members, uh, this is a good day in Minnesota. Uh, we're going to do something uh, remarkable today and save the lives of Minnesotans. Um, before I describe the bill and walk through some of the uh, differences in terms of the conference committee report from what passed in the House, I do have to thank some people. Uh, that uh, contributed hours of time and talent to get us to this place. First, I want to thank the members of our conference committee report, uh, Representative Liebling, uh, who spent many months and hours working on this, uh, as well as Representative Morrison, uh, Representative New, and Representative Albright. I want to thank the Senate conferees, uh, especially Senator Wickland, uh, who authored this bill with me more than a year ago. Uh, and has worked tirelessly on this, as well as Senator Jensen, the author in the Senate, Senator Benson, Senator Pratt, and Senator Rosen. And I want to thank Patrick McQuillan, RCA, who has put in uh, un untold hours working on this as well. There are other members uh, since last session that have worked mightily to get this to the finish line, including Representative Halverson, Representative Mann, and Representative Hamilton and in the Senate. I want to thank Senator Little, Senator Marty, and Senator Abler. I also want to thank Representative Aaron Murphy, uh, who introduced the first version of Alec's bill in 2018 and has been a steadfast supporter as we uh, went along this journey. Additionally, I want to thank the Gov Governor Walls and his administration, as well as folks at Minsure, the Board of Pharmacy, doctors, pharmacists, and nurses, all who helped in crafting this bill. And of course, most of all, I want to thank Nicole Smith-Holt and James Holt for sharing ALEC with us and for the countless Minnesotans uh, who have joined us at this Capitol. You are the reason we're going to pass this bill today, and I know so many of you wish you could be here, and we feel your presence in this Capitol now. Uh, House File 3100, the Conference Committee Report. The Alex Smith Insulin Affordability Act achieves what we set out to do more than a year ago to ensure that Minnesotans who are most at risk of rationing their insulin can get an emergency supply when they need it at a price they can afford. And that insulin manufacturers that have profited richly while the price of insulin has soared will have a role to solve this crisis. A few of the highlights. Uh, a patient who is in need of emergency insulin will be able to get it by filling out a basic application on the Minsure website or that's available at pharmacists. They will uh, pay a copay of $35 at their pharmacy to gain a 30-day supply with an option for an additional 30 days if they need it. We will connect those Minnesotans with available long-term resources, whether it be uh, health care options through the Minsure Exchange, through Minnesota Care, and also connect folks to long-term uh, patient assistance programs operated by the drug manufacturers. Uh, the eligibility for this program uh, really is one of the huge victories because we are ensuring that uh, a broad uh, spectrum of Minnesotans can access the program that need it. Uh, folks that are uninsured, underinsured, and Minnesotans on Medicare with high out-of-pocket co costs will be able to access an emergency supply of insulin. Uh, we took the Senate position. There's no income eligibility on the emergency program. There is an eligibility of 400% FPG to access longer-term insulin. In terms of drug manufacturers' participation in the program, this is one of the key differences with the House bill. As you recall, the House bill included a fee on the three insulin manufacturers to cover the cost of the insulin uh, in the Minnesota Insulin Program. In this bill, the manufacturers essentially have a choice. They can provide the supply of insulin uh, to, and reimburse the cost of pharmacists that are dispensing it, or they can face fines 
to, so that Minnesota can stand up and run an insulin assistance program here in Minnesota. Uh, those fines uh, are uh, more than double than what was included in the Senate bill. Uh, an insulin manufacturer could see $3.6 million in fines per year uh, for noncompliance in year one and $7.2 million in fines for noncompliance in year two. Uh, we've also added some baseline requirements for insulin manufacturers that offer patient assistance programs uh, so that they are uh, clearing barriers that patients have faced. Uh, those include operating a phone line six days a week for patients to access, uh, as well as meeting the baseline eligibility requirements set forth in this bill. Uh, we also include uh, a amendment uh, that was uh, worked on together with the House and Senate but brought forward by the Senate uh, to exempt low-cost insulins that come to market from participating in this program. Uh, there's been some discussion of and efforts of a biosimilar or a generic insulin to come to market. And if that comes to market at a truly affordable cost uh, for Minnesotans, they would be exempt from participating in this program. Uh, I do want to mention that the cost sharing cap uh, on health plans for insulin that was included in the House bill is not in this, uh, was not included in this bill, but it is something that warrants our consideration next session. Uh, you know, ultimately, what this bill says to Minnesotans is that if you need insulin to live, you can get it at a price you can afford. It's giving diabetics who manage this uh, challenging disease every moment of their lives the peace of mind that as a state we're saying we care about your life and we're going to make sure that you get the medication that you need and that the drug manufacturers that have profited richly as the price has soared will share in the responsibility in solving this crisis. Uh, no state has moved forward with a, a bill like this and made this kind of commitment to its people. It is truly nation leading and ultimately it will save lives. So I thank members. I stand for questions about the conference committee report and we'll have a few more comments on third reading but would stand for any questions.